Good morning. You're listening to Drinking Socially, the official untapped podcast. Your weekly look into what's happening in the untapped community and the world of beer. So this episode is brought to you by Untapped and the Untapped Store. It is time to shop, friends, family, yourself. Don't forget you, the most important person in your life. So when you're shopping for whoever you're shopping for, treat yourself and save some money by using the coupon code podcast. It just just works in the Untapped store, though. Don't go to Macy's or Amazon and try and use. Maybe it'll work. Who knows? Ooh, give it a shot. There are podcasts everywhere. Right. I think. Why not? Maybe we've just saved you a lot of money on matching pajamas for the whole family. Uh, somewhere else. Not in the Untapped store yet. But while you're in the Untapped store, save some money there for sure with coupon code podcast. 20% off your next purchase. Tons of cool stuff in there. Great new pub glass I saw. And if you haven't signed up for the Untapped Insiders yet, there's a whole other store there. So use the coupon code to save some dough, get some cool stuff. There's plenty to check out. I've been to the store in a bit. Lots of new things. And as always, follow us where you, where you follow things like subscribe. Santa is watching. So be nice and subscribe. Other than that, John, what's happening today? Hopefully Santa gives us a like on YouTube. That'd be pretty. That'd be pretty. That'd be big. That'd be big. Get the like for the big man. I like the idea of an uh, the, like the Untapped Insider Store. Kind of makes it feel like a speakeasy. Like you, can, anyone can go to the store, um, but the Insider Store Insiders. probably is where the pajamas will be That's revealed. Right. Eventually, be certainly stockings. Maybe don't just look yourself. We don't know. Yeah. We're just check, guessing. check often, <laughs> like you're trying to buy a PlayStation Five on Tap pajamas, right. both in the same Keep category this back. year. Keep checking. Um, back. So, hey everyone, um, really hey. nice to have everyone back here, kind of sitting by the fireplace as we sink a little further into our Christmas jogging pants. I promise, I promise, I'm not going to make this another mm. podcast about holidays, though. <laughs> Although there is a really special event that's taking place soon in fact it takes place shortly after the day where most americans eat turkey and watch football or complain about football while watching it the holiday the event i'm speaking about is small brewery sunday <laughs> and it's coming up on november 28th which is very close to the date you're likely listening to this so if you're the type that wants to go Chris. If you're the type that wants to go winter shopping early, <laughs> then you're going to need a break from those crowds and coupons and plastic bags full of unobtainable gifts. You're going to want to take a break at a place where you can leave the shopping in the trunk and enjoy a pint of well-earned and well-made local suds as you celebrate getting your cold weather shopping done early. Small Brewery Sunday is the best Sunday of the year to drink a beer, and I think that's an event worth celebrating. Another thing we're celebrating, old, not just me, but today we're going to be talking about the ever-present but hard-to-define old ale. So grab an old beer, cross your fingers with me, and hope that Harrison's able to shed some light on these oddly named ales. Harrison, Mm. I hope I didn't set you up for failure there. We'll find out soon, I guess, (laughs) every second at a time. Um, So today's badge is the old is new badge, which was a totally new badge to me because I didn't even know we had this one. (laughs) But I assumed, I assumed we did have something to highlight old ale as it is a style, um, but didn't quite know how we get it. This is fun doing some research and we'll do some more research cold sudsy research in a moment um but in order to earn this badge let's put the description first it says as with all good styles and trends old always becomes new again at some point with a history like the old ale it's no wonder it's proclaiming popularity five different beers in the style old ale get to this badge super straightforward um indeed now if you're like me and john and most people you're probably like old ale 
that should throw it away. Or maybe you're like old ale. I have a lot of those stored in a box in my closet. They used to be IPAs, but now maybe they're just old <laughs> ales. Shame on you. But that that's not what we're talking about. This is a real style of beer. Um, we went to the experts, went to the BJCP. Um, and basically, though, they're... The long and the short of it is it's a pretty broad category. And so the BJCP says is an ale of moderate to fairly significant alcoholic strength, bigger than standard beer, so not usually as strong or as rich as a barley wine. So it's like it's like an American strong ale. It's like a British strong ale. It's kind of like a British style or an English style barley wine, but maybe not an American one. Often tilted towards a maltier balance. I think the best summation though of this style this umbrella style of which a lot of beers like winter warmers and things like that fall into um is comes from michael jackson the beer hunter not the singer um and he says an old ale it should be a warming beer of the type that is best drunk in half pints by a warm fire on a cold winter's night so love that feels like this old ale has got a spirit to it and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that old IPA, maybe it is an old ale. It's not. But like maybe if you're by a fire and it hits you the right way, I think what he's getting at is it's more about the experience. Don't get too hung up on trying to lock this down into like a certain color, a certain ABV. It's got to taste a certain way. It was fun reading the BDCP, though, because they were talking about how like age has a thing to do. Like it should taste aged. And I was like, what does that mean? And there really wasn't even a way to describe that. It was like, have wood character, you know. but not be woody. And I was like, all right, well, I don't know how we're how we're doing this. But then also, it doesn't need to have a wood character to it. So, again, it's a big umbrella style. If it feels good an extra warm fire on a cold night, it might be an old ale. It also might be a stout or a barley wine or a lot of other things. But, again, the point is we have one today that I'm super stoked about. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, John, how are we both working our way towards the old is new badge. What do we got? Well, um, the badge that's really easy to earn, because all you have to do is drink an old ale, but also then you have to define an old <laughs> ale. The, <laughs> the, way, the way that we're going to get a little bit closer tonight is by a very exciting re-release from Sam Adams, Old Fezziwig, uh, oh. a, a beer that has about as much history as Scrooge's boss. I'm sure Harrison's already got a lineup of talking points for this beer that uh, I know he was pretty excited about. Uh, so <laughs> Sam's made this beer for a while. Let him fill you in on the details. The spec sheet for this beer made by Sam Adams. Style on untapped old ale. That's all we need to qualify for this badge as Harrison's inhaling it through his nose right now, just trying to take <laughs> it in. Uh, ABV 5.9%. So it, historically, yes, a higher uh, alcohol content than a moderate beer. Uh, 25 IBUs on untapped. This beer rates at 3.39 with almost 100,000 ratings. So kind of that's lower than we usually see, at least on the podcast. But I don't think that's going to influence Harrison's opinion as he dives into his first sip. And I don't think it's going to influence mine either. This is the type of beer. I, are you almost he's just getting through the whole glass in one sip? <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the exact like it makes me think of Christmas. This is the as Michael Jackson alluded to, I could call this an old ale just because it's gonna be so fun to sip. Harrison, will you tell us what you think after that first? gigantic sip gigantic gulp yeah. you know, i think it's this new glass this insider stores glass that just i think i took a weird breath at the perfect time and kind of created a vacuum inside the glass in my nose and it just fired down or maybe i was just excited <laughs> a lot to be excited about this beer has been gone forever really long time we can talk about that in a minute let's talk about first sips though first this is delicious so my first like thought is it's like, I'm trying to take this journey with me here. It's almost like a lighter scotch ale. Like it's not as heavy, not as malty, not as toffee in the face, but it's all there. It's very like, almost like, 
like a scotch ale with like oranges and cinnamon happening, but that's all very subtle. It's just really good. It's just like, it's so in the description, it talks about having it's got, you know, cinnamon, ginger, orange peel. There's a lot of stuff like in this beer, bursting with spices. Really, though, for me, it's like this that's not what's happening in the first sip. The first sip is just like a nice malt forward, right? Like scotch ale, brown ale, red ale, like a just like those classic malty beers you'd like. It's kind of like all the good of those beers um, with a little spice happening, like a little, like something's going on at the end there. I don't know if it's the cinnamon or the ginger or what, but I don't care. It's, I really, I consumed it very quickly. Um, so I need a fire stat before I end a colder night because I'm sweating <laughs> <laughs> in order to fit Michael Jackson's description. But that's, it's, yeah, it's kind of like almost there's a cherry note in here. But again, it's all very subdued. It's really that for me, nothing like it jumps out and goes, oh, this is like a chocolate orange or whatever. That's not happening. It's like, oh, there's a chocolate note and there's a little orange note. There's a little cherry note and some cinnamon is in here for sure but not a ton. Anyway, that's what's happening right away. But this is one of those ones where, right, in five minutes, if there's any left, if I can calm down, it'll probably taste different, like noticeably. And I bet you the spices are going to come out more. But that's what I got first. What about you, John? What's happening over there on your side with a good old Fezzy wig? I'm I'm excited that this beer's back. Which should tell you that I bought into the hype, right? There was a lot of people that were kind of sad that it yeah. wasn't around, especially last Christmas. But yes. oh, darn it. I mean, last winter year. Um, <laughs> so first sip coming in here, the head on this beer is incredible. It's yeah. like it's so smooth. It's like uh, as if I poured it from a nitro tap. So I love that kind yeah. of creamy head on a dark beer. And to your point, Harrison, scotch ale maybe like session scotch ale or a, right. a, a, a kind of a funky brown even or a red ale mm -hmm. there's a little bit of bitterness yeah. so this beer could be made with almost the same ingredients that you would use to make a scotch or a brown or sure. a red with the key difference being time right someone uh someone let it sit for a while at least historically it was just a, an <laughs> older beer so maybe that's why there's so many similarities to other beers that we've tasted on the podcast. But a after a sip or two, what it reminds me of is like, I, I, I grew up Italian, so I feel like I'm allowed to say this. Italian Christmas cookies are horrible. They're like, they're like <laughs> fruitcake cookies. If they're chocolate, they're not sweet right. chocolate. And then they've got like raisins and figs and nuts and things you got to work through. <laughs> they're not like chocolate covered peanut butter yeah. or some, something that, uh, that an American kid would love yeah. like me. And it reminds me of that though, with like, like the ginger and the fruit. Um, right. So that yeah. is endearing. Um, a flavor that I di disliked as a child, but now when I taste them, it's nostalgic. And I think that's, what maybe an old ale should accomplish for me is some nostalgia. Yeah. And that's, and this beer is great. You're right. And I mean, Sam, Sam Adams goes right out of their way and says, this is kind of like a Christmas cookie of a beer. In my head, Christmas cookie is like a sure cookie that you put icing on. looks like Santa, but now <laughs> I see that's not what they mean. Um, <laughs> there's no more icing. I don't know where it went. I guess it just Santa gets bare, weirdly shaped sugar cookies. <laughs> like Harrison's Christmas beer here. would be a uh, blonde ale with vanilla frosting mixed in at the end. Like, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, whatever goes well with a pie pudding next to it. Um, we're in it. <clears throat> um, you know, that's right. Not being shy about it. These jogging pants aren't going to stretch themselves. True. So, um, but to, to your point of nostalgia, like this beer, so you're right. This is a big deal. There was art, like, we can all talk about hype beers all the time. Hype, hype, hype. There's new one that's produced every day, whatever. That's great. Um, <laughs> but there's something different about like a storied beer about that, like disappears for a while and then comes back. And I feel like a, a lot of breweries have put into this that have been doing this for a while, whether it's, 
Sierra Nevada bring back classics, Sam Adams, like Dog Dog Country does it every year. There's something they're like, what do you want us to bring back? We haven't done it in a bit. So, and that's what you can do with a brewery that's been around, has a long legion of fans and a history. And now you got to get the fans involved with social media. It's so cool that it, you know, used to like hire a marketing team and they'd pull people and they'd make a decision and then maybe it worked. Maybe those people didn't know what they were talking about and you got some bad info. Now you can do what Sam Adams did and they just put out in, I think it was late September of this year, a post that said, hey, if this gets 5,000 likes, we'll bring old Fezziwig back. And they quickly got 11,000 likes on just the Facebook post alone. They shared on all their social media. So that's, you know, and now they, now it's here. So that's a really cool part of this whole campaign is that it it feels like forever people have been saying, bring old Fezziwig back. And they were like, all right, if you're serious, show us that. And they instantly did by liking the post. And now here it is. So that's really cool too. But to kind of the nostalgia point, I mean, this beer used to be in the their, what they called their Winter's Classic Pack, which is now yeah. the Beers for Cheers Pack, which is great. That's an awesome variety pack. And for me, best variety packs are the 12 packs that have six different beers to of each. Like, give me the variety. Don't put three beers in a variety pack. Get out of here. Give me variety. I just want and the chocolate one beer. Box. Like the beer. Yeah. Yeah. So the chocolate <laughs> box used to be in it. The Cranberry Lambic, the Holiday Porter, which is still in it. But Chocolate Bach and Cranberry Lambic also have like this dedicated fan base. Every post you see online of Old Fezziwig is the top comment is some guy going, I wish Cranberry Lambic was back as well. <laughs> Never satisfied. <laughs> um, but I get it. Because for me, like, again, to the nostalgia, like part of me coming home for Christmas in college every year was like the winter classics variety pack was in the fridge and it was fall and leftover sandwiches and sam adams winter classics and that's like what holiday break was for me as i was like discovering what beer was even after college going home you know as a young adult it was that living in new england sam adams is just in the fridge most of the time certainly around the holidays so this is cool for me to have this back um and it's you know for right big part of my beer history sad it was gone really cool though that sam adams wasn't just deaf to that and was like yeah okay let's let's do it and really why not it's such a cool beer so we yep. did it internet we made it happen <laughs> we did some good Whew. um and now i'm based on, enjoying it with john Great. based on how many people uh, engage with Sam Adams on that Twitter post and Facebook and probably Instagram. If they did on there, I missed it, but yeah. they've got the hashtag uh, free the Fez, which I think free. Harrison's a proponent of. Um, but it is really cool to see yes. that like some of you listening to this podcast were probably part of maybe the reason that it exists. Uh, do I, what would have happened if we didn't? like it enough times maybe harrison and i would be drinking a chocolate bock right now and maybe i would say that'd be better but um but but it's a good question it is kind of brilliant i think i wouldn't have if this beer would have stayed around every year right either whether it became a tradition for you or you just knew it existed then you likely wouldn't have had the the hype that's kind of surrounded it with this year's re-release and yes it is a, a storied well-made beer but i love that sam adams is is kind of thinking about it too like yeah let's go to social media and i mean wouldn't it be cool if if more breweries maybe not maybe it'd be horrible but wouldn't it be neat if once in a while like your favorite local brewery was like should we do a an orange gosa or a chocolate stout you know and just people got to weigh in on it battling yelling at each other in the comments and then physical (laughs) fights break out yeah let's keep it (laughs) civil people but another brewery that I love, they did this They're on the same time Dogfish Head put out a post saying, all right, guys, what should we bring back next year? Leave it in the comments. This is what we need to happen, people. All right, this is my comment. This is the best comment. Go find it. Like it. Let's make this happen. Let's find this post. And let's make uh, Dogfish Head make these beers that I want. Um, next year is 2022. So my whole theme is 22. We're going to double down. And Dogfish Head should double dry hop 
60 minute, 90 minute, and apron hop and bring them all back. Double dry hop beers. That's the best idea ever. Go find my post. Let's like it. Message Sam. Call his house. <laughs> I would, I would want to drink double dry hop 60 and 90 more 90 i think than 60 but be it's been a while since i've drank either i'd be excited to jump into there and aprahop greatest beer dogfish had ever made maybe is that why you picked it or is there a different reason you added that one in there or w- w- was it just well, you I mean, wanted to drink also, it again yeah yeah it's been a, i just really want that beer because that was yeah. the beer we <laughs> talked about it a lot on the, the podcast where the years that it was really bitter and really hoppy, it was like the best beer ever. Some years, the apricot stole the show. And I was like, that's not what I, I know it's called apricot, but it's hop is in there too. It's half that beer. Give me more hop. So I'm sure I would be happy if they double dry hop that out of it, made it a big old hazy apricot bomb. Like that's what the world wants. That's not overthinking people. You know, you want it. I want it. Sam wants to make it. So let's just make everybody happy. Find that post, like it, message them, send an email, whatever people do um, to communicate these days. But that would be that'd be that'd be pretty sick. So double double dry hops for 2022. It could happen. Um, maybe. I like the path you're going down <laughs> for that one though. 2022, lots of room for. Hey, regardless of what you think about your local or every brewer one thing that they have in common is coming up with names for the beers isn't it's easy if you had to do it once you know like you're at the bar it's your 14th drink you're there every day hey name this beer (laughs) super easy but when you have to do it every single day and you're like oh there's already 40 beers with that name and you got to start getting creative and think like Campbell's soup IPA chunks. Nope, no one's going to want to buy that. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's amazing, amazingly cr- creative people. And I'm excited to see if 2022 introduces some weird double hop trends. Maybe even like double, can we do like a double dry hopped hazy brown? I don't, I, I, I would line yeah. up and try it. I want to see what it looks like. Me too. Dogfish, I could do it with India Brown. Bring back India Brown and double dry yeah, hop. Yeah, that's a that's perfect a beer one. for it. Double dry hop all your beers. Not that hops are expensive yeah. or anything, Dogfish. Yeah, sure you you're fine. Around. Yeah. Chuck them in there. Um, but uh, that'd be cool. I'm not, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Um, yeah, maybe not even beer. I mentioned just a juicy fruits thing. Like, no, that's double mint gum is double the pleasure. They should have a big year. They should do like a quadruple the juicy fruit. When's the last year gums had a big year? It's probably like the nineteen. It's been a minute, but, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's been. A, it's especially with everybody working from home. You don't even have to worry about brushing until afternoon anymore. That's right. You're right. You don't need to brush your teeth anymore. I don't do anything. Um, so breath re- really dropped from priority. Right when we were seeing people all day, it was kind of up here. Whoa, dropped, dropped like a rock. Um, but I hope people run with it in 2022. Double the uh, fun in the sun. I'm sure we'll see it. I'm sure we'll be sick of it by March, but now we're not. So let's ride the lightning and see what happens. <laughs> it's working. Riding mm. the lightning would be a would be a proper name if if Sam did like a double uh, an imperial Fezziwig. I guess that would probably be that maybe they would call it Scrooge. Super, yeah, Scrooge or Super Fezzy Wig, Fezzy Wig's wig. And if you want to know a little more about old Fezzy Wig himself, so from A Christmas Carol, written, of course, by Charles Dickens. And Fezzy Wig was like the antithesis or the kind of the, with this, the Scrooge's like former employer and everything Scrooge wasn't. He was like happy, jovial, cared about his employees, and Scrooge was the worst. So Fezzy Wig happy, Scrooge the devil. <laughs> but he, he figures it out. Um, and if you're more of a fan of the Christmas Carol, the, the movie versions than a silly old book, I'm sure you know that old Fancy Week isn't played by legends like Bob Hoskins, played Smee and Hook and all kinds of other things, Lawrence Naismith, and everyone's favorite Hollywood square, the omnipresent Bruce Valanche. Love that guy. Amazing haircut. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Best wig, happy dude, caring person, a jovial person. It's like this beer, happy, jovial. Um, I didn't. Celebratory. 
I don't know who any of those people are. <laughs> um, I, I, I got excited songs. that you were going to say Bruce Willis for a second, and then you didn't. Um, uh, so, you know, I'm sure crossover. Fezziwig's probably got a great, you know, IMDb actors page or whatever. But the only thing I remember about Scrooge is, you know, he was a he was a jerk. I mean, this is from my childhood. He remind I was like, "That's my dad's boss." Oh, what, I never want to get a job if you have to go in and work <laughs> Scrooge. Right. Sounds horrible. Right. Um, it's slightly better, but um, but what I remember about Fezziwig is like shutting down. Uh, he shut down his business. They were, I don't know, a shoe factory or whatever. He shut it down on Christmas, like said, no one's coming in and just took care of his people. And I'd imagine they were drinking right. something similar to this as they were all feasting sure. and kind of celebrating. Uh, that sounds cool. Right. That, the, cheers to you, Fezzy. That's right. Cheers to all the Fezzy wigs out there being cool, being, having a good time, thinking about other people and uh, throwing a few back on the holidays. <clears throat> on this lovely old ale and we have a badge to talk about yeah a badge that's we're not the only ones throwing it back hopefully that's right although not too many we'll reveal the stats <laughs> soon but again we know old ales aren't on every street corner and they're kind of the name i mean it's it's all probably a case of marketing you see old ale and your first thought is like, well, that's probably that's old. Why do I want an old? No one's selling me old ham or old juice. Like, I'm not buying anything else that's so old. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of anything that old <laughs> makes better. Maybe right. Ford Mustangs. There you but... go. Exactly right. That's like much older, right? There's that weird gap, right? Like, old juice eventually becomes wine, and then you can sell it again, or it kills you. It's, it's something else that makes you blind. But it's that middle, right? Like an old, an '80s Mustang, ugh, but a 1968 Mustang. Let's go. How much? I'll get some house. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yes, you know, there's that accurate. weird when something's just old and not antique. It's like get it out of here. It's sticking up the fridge. But <laughs> I'm really selling old ales right now. Um, old ham, not <laughs> old ham. Yeah, you wait a little bit longer, and then it becomes beef jerky. No, it doesn't. Don't do that. That's how you get botulism when you die. Um, <laughs> Harrison <laughs> told me to do it. Right. No. I did not. I never said that I'm not a doctor. You have to leave it out in the sun for it to turn That's into right. beef jerky. <laughs> yeah. More, it also, also ferment and turn into <laughs> some kind of ham wine, which Ooh. nobody wants. Well. <laughs> yeah, I'm game for that little breakfast wine. Right. Breakfast wine on the eggs. <laughs> um, but so this beer, old ale, I know it's kind of a hard sell, but there's some great ones out there. And as we said, it's broad, it's a broad category. So if you had an old ale and you're like, not for me, I, there are a few, we'll listen in a minute that are probably worth visiting. This is easily one of them, which I've also classified as a winter warmer. That works. Like, I'm not going to freak out about that. Um, but it's an old ale on untapped. And again, that's correct too. Um, and the oldest new badge, so again, I have to do a second divider and here's the style of old ale, 35,000 unlocks. So not, Ooh. if you're keeping track at home, usually we're talking about 200,000, 300,000, a million and a half, two million. This is easily like the, a, a non-sponsored or special badge, a core badge, the lowest number of unlocks I've ever seen. And again, no knock on old ales. I know I'm really coming hard down hard on old ales right now. <laughs> Don't mean to. Really, I'm hoping this is the turnaround. This is the kick in the pants that old ale needs to say, let's go, people. Look at me. And really, old Fezziwig may help me single-handedly help these unlocks max out in, you know, this holiday season. I'm not too worried. But there are a lot of awesome beers on this list. So if you're curious about old ales, this is an easy list. We can just shoot through now the top beers that have unlocked this badge. Number one. Any guesses, John? I mean, this is, uh, again, it's crazy. There are a few yeah, well, that I'm sure you know from U.S. Well, breweries. but um, In a minute, the, John hasn't drank many of them. Um, but <laughs> I know... Would assume the brewery probably has something on there because they're, I think they're making old ales in a very traditional sense. I hope we'll see Fezziwig on there. And I'd put my money on the one from Founders that they mm. release because it's in regular distribution. I think it's an annual 
it's a regular release for them. I can't remember what it's called. It's not like backwoods bastard. It's the same. My wife always says like, Oh, that <laughs> sounds like a beer. Like, and I can't remember what they call it. Right. Well, you are maybe correct. So there's, so the top beer, top two actually is a beer from founders called curmudgeons better half. Now the original beer, which is really funny uh, that founders made was a beer just called curmudgeon. It was also an old ale. It was like 9.8% or whatever. And I remember going to the brewery in, I guess it would have been 10, 2010 or 2011 in Grand Rapids and talking with one of the, um, one of the guys there. And he was like, yeah, we are going to stop brewing old curmudgeon because when that beer comes out of holiday parties, like people make mistakes. And I was like, all right, pretty powerful. That's a pretty good endorsement for an old deal. We're back on the plus <laughs> yeah, side. It like, sounded crazy. So they did away with curmudgeon for a long time, but then brought back. So curmudgeon on the bottles, like this grumpy old guy, the joke here is, which is what a curmudgeon is. The joke here is that curmudgeon's better half. His wife is, you know, a better beer, whatever. And so the logo of the better half, the better half is him and his wife's posing for an ancient portrait or whatnot. And it's even boozier. It's it's like 12.7%. It's aged uh, with molasses uh, in oak. um, Gold IHOP. 200 and so some days. But anyway, yeah, it's a little IHOP in your step, um, which is, is great for everybody. But uh, so that's the number one beer. Kermund's better half out of all the old it. Um, number one and two, because the, the 2018 version is a, a one, one I'm sure people in Untapped are sitting on and drinking later. Good. Um, after that, though, Barrel Age Stock Ale from Guinness's Open Gate Brewery, which is pretty cool. And then, ready and John from the brewery, Etain, I believe, or Etain, Etain, <clears throat> their old ale. 2018 and then one beer that i love the same very similar to the reason i like old Fezziwig from great divide hibernation ale which is like something oh, yeah, like yeah. Kind of old ale winter warmer type thing old peculiar from Thiessen, another one from brewery stall or soleil from 2017 sick and then there it is old Fezziwig rounding out number eight out of the top 10 and finishing off with vintage ale from fuller's which is one you see a lot that is maybe like one of the more i don't know available old ales the vintage ale and then old jubilation from avery which is another one of those beers like hibernation like old fuzzy wig that was probably like your introduction to this kind of beer like a big strong winter ale that uh that came out usually around this time of year from a lot of those breweries like Sam Adams, like Avery, like Great Divide. They've been doing this for the better part of 20 plus, uh, much more in Sam's case years, uh, which is it's cool. So older breweries, old ales, makes sense. Um, but some yeah. good ones out there. Woo! All right. How are yeah. you doing on this list, though? Speaking of old, John, how are we doing? What are we doing on uh, this badge? How's Logan? <laughs> <laughs> so I went into untapped and I went to go see what level I was on and the badge was kind of grayed out. So I knew I was in trouble. Um, and then I was like, well, maybe I'll get to unlock it on, on the podcast. Nope. I have checked into two old ales soon to be three. Um, and at my current rate, it seems like I check into an old ale once every three years. So I should be earning this badge somewhere around 2027. Uh, which isn't exciting no. for me at all. But the ones that I've drank, one of them was a really early bottle share from a grocery store manager going back to like 2015. Uh, I love you, Untapped, for that. I've totally forgot about you, Jason. Yeah. Thanks for bringing me that beer back from Greenport Harbor. And the second one yeah. more recently, a couple of years ago, was Old Fashioned from Wicked Weed. Huh. I love Old yeah. Fashions, and that beer was also really good. And Fezziwig, these beers are great. I guess I just, I don't, maybe I don't see them as often. Maybe they're lesser known, lesser made. Um, or maybe, yeah. Harrison, you're at level 40. I don't know. You strike me as an old ale connoisseur. Like you've got a, you've probably got verticals of old ales in your sock drawer. Yeah, that's my excuse. That's I haven't had them yet. They're still sitting <laughs> in boxes. That's why I haven't done almost a collector, on this bag. 
Right. <laughs> so I have one check-in so far. Womp womp. This will be number two. So I'm once again chasing John, although a bit closer this time. We're both right yeah, at the bottom. We're both at the starting line. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I had a beer called Unobtainium. Great name. Awesome. Uh, from Straight to Ale out of Huntsville, Alabama. It was also a bottle share at uh, Untapped HQ, though. I think a couple of Februarys ago, the end of the month, people, that yeah, used to be a really cool common thing about working at Untapped. People would bring bottles of beer towards the end of the month, and you just do bottle shares at the end of the day, as I'm sure people imagine it is it's what happens at Untapped. Just all day, right? That's what, how your day yeah, begins. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, some days, actually, I think <laughs> <laughs> no comment um but uh but that was a fun memory that i had to forgot about too and a cool beer so that was great to look back on that but also a wake-up call of maybe i mean this is the year of the lager and that's not going to change but you know, duckle vice nights were kind of slowly moving out of those maybe it's old ale evenings now john i can get pipes out we can Ooh, have some old you ale had me at pipes. And sit by the fire right have some yeah, throw fire nice. into the pipe, throw fire into the that's fireplace, great. throw a fezzy wig uh, into your pint glass. <laughs> We're throwing things, most of them on fire, while <laughs> drinking. It's a good time. It's safe. Keep your kids at home. Um, but old hell evenings, I hate that I everything has to be a t-shirt, but I guess it does in my brain. Um, anyway, Helps you I got some work to do here. Uh, you're right. It's just a, it's a mechanism so I don't forget. That's all it is. Yep. I say oh, old old senses, I'll, I'll never yep. remember. <laughs> um, so here's here's a with your highly functioning brain organization system and using t-shirts as post-it notes uh one of the questions <laughs> i want to ask you before we move on as we're finishing up uh, sort of our first sips of fezzy wig we talked about small <laughs> brewer sunday coming up very soon november 28th um regardless of what anyone says you can support this wherever you live whenever you want but sunday november 28th is kind of like you know a big deal for it and and you should be arguably thinking smaller and trying to buy local and support the people in your community so this is a great holiday right. around that the question i want to ask you harrison we'll call it a not necessarily a would you rather but we'll call it like a question of the week question of the podcast Right. Old ale question, okay. either way, work and title. Next mm. year for Small Brewery Sunday 2022, if you got back into the brewing saddle and were wearing your wet shoes again, where yeah. would you want to be brewing to kind of ring in Small Brewery Sunday a year from now? Ooh. Yeah, the old time oh, travel question. Moved. Right. Okay. Got it. Good. Time. Classic. Right in my wheelhouse. Just moved, so the idea of moving again is terrifying. <laughs> I'd rather take my own life. Um, but, but this is a game, so I'll, let's try that again. I'll start. I'll moving is it, moving is inarguably the worst thing humans have. Well, okay, maybe I, not. I mean, I thought it was gonna, it's I pretty thought bad. I thought it was going to be the big one. Yeah, it was going to be. I thought I was going to not make it. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, I did, but no interest in doing that. But again, but since this is an exercise, saying Wilmington, where we are, is too easy. And also, there are so many good breweries here. It'd kind of be kind of silly. So I think what I'm going to do is just let this this time of year, as you said, next year, uh, Small Brewery Sunday, uh, let this time of year guide my decision. So I'm a big Ray Bradbury fan. If you are as well, good luck. If not, it's only a matter of time or cheers to you, whatever. Um, but um, <laughs> good, good, but um, so he always used to write stories that took place in like tiny towns and Midwestern states in the fall and the leaves are rustling and magic and ghosts and traveling caravans and carnivals and things like that. All things I like and things that. Growing up reading those books, it was very easy to like imagine you and the story in this, you know, lovely little town that got turned upside down by monsters or goblins or whatever happened in that book. Um, time traveling wizards. Is all he kinds the guy that wrote R is for Rocket? Yes. And then also awesome I think, yeah, and that's a great that's a quick that's the first story in the Martian Chronicles, which is a collection of short stories and 
Right. That also takes place in like a little Midwestern town. So he just loved writing about the Midwest. Um, so it's an idyllic place. So why wouldn't I want to live there? And so I guess what I'd like to do is pick a couple of towns and imagine what it'd be like to brew in like okay. Petoskey, Michigan, right up on top of the mitten here and there. But that'd be tough because Beard's Brewing and Burnt Marshmallow Brewing are also in town. They got it on lock. So maybe I might get outcompeted very quickly. Burnt Marshmallow. That sounds good, amazing. Man. Never had their beer, That's, but I want it already. I know, but I'm I'm already way curious with smoked sweet anything. Um, so maybe I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to hack it there. And cold. Off, Let's be honest, cold. Right. Yeah. This. You're right. Yeah, they probably have so on the ground enough. I think they do. So. Maybe not for me, but that's kind of what the Midwest offers. So I may have to just that's accept that. That's fair. This is really what I what I what I want. The next on the lovely list of idyllic small towns in the Midwest is Hill City, South Dakota, the heart of the Black Hills. But Minor Brewing Company, who makes great beer, they're right down the road too. So they give me a run for my money. So maybe it's competition too steep, and I have to bounce to somewhere like Kohler, Wisconsin. But Three Sheeps Brewing is kind of down the road, not in Kohler, but near Kohler. So maybe I'd be okay. It's like the one show in town, but maybe do some cool labs with Three Sheeps. Those guys are great. That'd so be if you're cool. near Kohler, go see them this weekend. Then I thought, what about a lovely little town that maybe belongs in the Netherlands, but is in Iowa? And of course, Pella, Iowa came right to mind. A touch of Holland. They have their tulip festival and all kinds of things. But Luck would have it. Peace Tree Brewing, close too. So I don't know if I want to jump on their toes. They seem nice, Peace Tree. I mean, I don't think they'd put up much of a violent protest to be opening a brewery in town. But uh, Pella, Iowa, doesn't sound like a giant metropolis, though. Do you do no. you know if that's a is that a really big town? About ten thousand people. Looks like they have a bunch of canals. It looks lovely. It looks like okay. the biggest, Man, cleanest they could probably town support ever. Support another couple of breweries, maybe sneak in there. Maybe, maybe, but if not, tree? then no. next, right, no, yeah, let's, yeah, right, that's right, um, yeah, not, may, oh, I think Angry Pig exists, that'd be a good name, Peace Street Angry Tree, we can make a, never mind, <clears throat> I almost had a, a funny joke there, but we'll save it for the Patreon version of the show that doesn't exist, um, <laughs> Medora, North Dakota popped up next on my radar, famous for the Chateau de Moor is a huge, a cool hunting lodge, but Beaver Creek Brewing is kind of nearby. They grow over the line in Utah, technically, but um, still could be tough competition, which shouldn't scare me. I mean, I could make, used to be able to make good beer. It's been a while. Give me some time. Back off. Um, or maybe Fish Creek, Wisconsin, known for all the fish. Um, but one barrel brewing company for in Door County, they're there too. So it's tough to find a cute little town, John that doesn't have a really cool brewery that already that you guys should be supporting all the time and certainly this Sunday. So maybe I'll just, I don't know, stick out here in Wilmington. That's where you are. I know you'll come and drink at the brewery on Small Brewery Sunday. That's probably what my deepest bet is. Where where are my customers? I'll just make, which are my friends that I bully into coming. They're all here. So that's <laughs> the businessman of me says, just try it in Wilmington. Just do something a little unique, like only make old ales, maybe. Maybe that's there you thing. go. Um, based on untapped <laughs> check ins, that's, that's not the yep. that's not the way you want to go. <laughs> Double dry hopped old ales, maybe. Um, Ooh, so, dry hopped old ales. Yeah. Do you dry hop them before <laughs> you make mold? Because this is getting really rough. Uh, <laughs> that's right. But, but you need the hops to keep it alive. Pastry old ales or old pastry ales? That's a that's a well, that's an Instagram that I'm not yeah, following yet. Not yet, but I, I see a nice natural partnership with Dunkin' Donuts. There, we take the old donuts; they're going to throw out. Nope, throw them in the beer. Recycling donuts in the beer, old pastry ales. That's the name of the brewery. We're done. Patent pending. I Reach think out you for got it. We'll, right, we'll start a Kickstarter. Go set up in whatever one of those lovely small towns you mentioned that has the closest Dunkin' Donuts. I think you, you're onto something. Yeah, um, franchised. One place 
that I'm quite sure you won't find a Dunkin' Donuts is Zagreb, Croatia, or Zagreb, huh? Croatia. It makes me think oh, of Street Fighter every that's... time I say it. But yeah, um, we went well across the world there in a quick swipe of the brush. But we're talking about this week's verified venue that I want to highlight. And yes. it's a beer store and bar in uh, Zagreb. Sorry if you're Croatian and I sound like I'm from North Carolina, but that's how I would say it if I was there until someone corrected me. The place I want to shout out is a, is called Goblet, uh, which is a great name because if you're drinking beer out of a goblet, you're immediately higher ranked than anyone else near you. Um, the, the way that I found them, aside from the fact that they've had over 700 check-ins in the last month, which is Ooh. ridiculous, um, is they have the breweries attain on their menu, which was a 2018 Ooh. special anniversary ale yes. that the brewery does. They blend together okay. uh, little bits of all their... Di- the, the brewery, I guess, just has like bundles of old beer that they're sitting on and then they just go in and grab pieces of each one and that was to celebrate their 10th year um it's already a little bit old and it's on the menu in goblet at croatia they also i mean these guys i don't know uh, i'm gonna ask you in a second if you want to prepare harrison about what you know about beer in in croatia but they just featured one called death by ibu which i thought you would get a kick out of because we were talking about back in the day when ipas would be racing for this this beer had a hundred ibus and it was called death by ibu i think they they advertise as a double west coast ipa and the coolest part about goblet in my opinion is that they just celebrated an event an event, not a holiday, called Gobletaza, Gobletaza, where they crown a goblet chief for the year and they celebrate this with their untapped loyal patrons. So the people who check in the most. Sick. They had a photo on their social media with their top four untapped patrons collaborating together over 4,000 check ins among them, Ooh. which is kind of cool. Like, If you're going out and you're checking in, you kind of have your regular spots. And if you make it to that, you know, top loyal patron section and untap, look around. You probably recognize one or two people. If not, it may be the best way to make friends as a grown up. Um, So so that's hopefully a a lesson (laughs) learned. If you're wondering how you make friends after 40, look at the loyal patrons. At least they drink as much as you. And Goblet has an awesome awesome event celebrated i wish more breweries and bars near me would would do that i thought that was a really cool idea harrison do you know much about the brewing scene in croatia is there like is there a big craft embrace going on is there some breweries that are kind of standing out to you there are was not too surprised because it's craft beers everywhere now to find pretty quickly a lot of amazing breweries some of which i'd heard of before um, actually coming out of Croatia. So Nova Runda, uh, I'm going to see them pop up more and more as well as Hotch Potch, which I love. Awesome that name. name. Becker's Craft, yeah, a great name. Becker's Craft Brewery popping up, being checked in, kind of, I mean, all over the place. It was pretty cool just looking at um, at some of the check-ins that I was seeing from a lot of these breweries with great names, cool logos. And as you mentioned, um, that that death by IBU beer is actually a collaboration between two the two I believe highest rated uh, breweries in Croatia, Mascaron and Depulfer. So two of the best doing it locally, making a beer that's designed to melt your taste buds. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So, yeah, it's not a beer scene I know much about, but it was quick, you know, looking at what Goblet's doing, Untapped, and the check-ins, and um, the the kind of beer they're making, and the reviews they're getting, and they're clearly doing some awesome stuff. And it's, again, just another brewery on a long list of amazing breweries that I just need to go check out. But their Clash of the Titans series that Mascaron does with different kind of hazy IPAs or American-style IPAs looks awesome. Like, they're just doing, 
I mean, again, every, every, I feel like every brewery is doing something really cool and amazing, and then you learn about another one, and you're like, well, that's even cooler. So, yeah, I, I love the idea yeah. of of using Untapped as like a, a resource to determine where you might go on vacation if you're never going to move again or even if you're thinking about relocating like yeah you probably want to check the schools and the crime rate but we should also check our <laughs> beer scene in the in the area like is there going to be a bottle shop that i can get all the beers i need when i land right. uh, because if the answer is yes i probably want to go i definitely want to um, it given the fact that I'm not going at least for the next couple of weeks, probably not until after the hot, the event season here. Um, when, when I start to travel again, let's go back in time a little bit further. Harrison. Sure. What was the best beer you had this week? I had some good ones. Looking forward to all the ones I get to consume in the next couple of days, though. It is, of course, if you're watching this today, it comes out right before Thanksgiving, Turkey Day. Let's just say Turkey Day, the event. I'm done talking about the H word. That's fine. Um, lots of stuff to look forward to. So next week's best for the week will be tough. This week's was easy. It was New Belgium's accumulation. I think winter IPA is what they officially call it. But this is one of those beers that... Um, it first came out, it was a white IPA, then it was like a weed IPA. Now, very clearly on the can is a double dry hopped hazy IPA. That's how they're, and it's, it is different. I mean, it's the best it's ever tasted. So if you have nice. it, jumped out and grabbed accumulation, that's one of those beers that comes out every year. Like I, as you learned last week, you know, fall head over heels for celebration again and again every year somehow but accumulation is is great and it is one of those seasonals where it's like i am very excited about this and i think you know next year i'll be as excited about that as about celebration for like the exact opposite well, not exact opposite but celebration is going to punch me with the pine this is going to be like hazy and fruity and fluffy and it's going to be like the sasquatch first the yeti it's going to be it's going to be great so i can do it tonight actually i have some left of both i think so anyway if you have had accumulation in a while it is like hazier it's much like it, it was always had that wheat haze to it but this is like a double dry hopped like really hazy not crazy thick but definitely like juicier bigger Beer that just tasted like you know the best brewery in town, double dry hopped it right down the street. Except New Belgium did it, so <clears throat> that was really cool for me to uh, to check out and be like even happier than I was already prepared to be about a beer that I've had uh, a couple of times before. I want to ask you what the difference between a Sasquatch and a Yeti oh, and a Bigfoot God, is, no. but <laughs> you're. We don't have time. We don't I have, have time. The, I have a note you, writ, you, you wrote down for me a while ago. But um, we'll what about you, John? That. What did you? Yeah, we'll address that later. We'll address it later for podcast. Um, best beer of the week for me. I want to try accumulation now that I know it's a little bit different. Yeah. That's exciting. That yeah. way, I can just say it's not as good as last year or better than last year, and that'll be the only thing I say Great. about it. Um, <laughs> one of the beers that I remember having the most was from a local brewery. Um, and I'm not tying this in because of small brewery Sunday coming up. I'm tying this in because the beer was named bag of snakes and it was a 6.9 <laughs> fruited sour. It's been a while since okay. I had one. And I think the only thing I said on my untapped check-in was milky bananas. One sip in, I was already sad that there wasn't a full pour left. It was, it was, it was a journey to drink through that and just get progressively sadder um, about losing that beer. Although I was at the brewery and I could have got another, but turns out a pint was perfect, the right amount, uh, and then finished it up with a nitro red ale. So cheers to you, Flying Machine, yes. for making two great beers. But Bag of Snakes was great and also kind of fun to say if you're thinking about christmas shopping for your kids and you can't come up with an idea bag of snakes no not not the best easy. not sure. the best idea maybe but it'll keep yeah. them busy that's right it's healthier than an ipad probably playing with a bag <laughs> of snakes well it tends to get the kind of snake i guess but whatever <laughs> it's all part of life it's all part of the experience i'll figure it out um 
how, how oof, I can't. All right, this is great. Feeling good. A uh, holly happy event to everybody. We had, I had a great time enjoying <laughs> these old deals this evening. Jesse Wing is back. Beers for Cheers. That's the variety pack. It's everywhere. Go grab it. It's a great variety pack. They got an IPA in there that I enjoyed. When lagers back, the holiday white ale is always fun. Holiday porter, super underrated. It's like a brown ale porter kind of thing. It's it's good. Lots of lager, of course. Um, so check it out. That's how you're gonna grab with Fezziwig if you want it. Nice to know it's pretty much everywhere though, um, or it should be. Um, but had fun talking about old ales and imagining living in Pella, Iowa, growing a windmill. Um, this was a good episode, John. And remember to follow us online, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped. You can find us there. Add Dream with John, Ed Harry Beer Beard. Friend us. See all these cool check-ins we're doing. John's pictures are better than mine. Mine are just the same table, or there's a dog in the background, or I'm just holding it over the drum sets. So I forgot to take a picture when I actually drink the beer, and I'm just grabbing the empty. Um, whatever. That's life. Sometimes there's you're an, just taking pictures of empty beers in your office. And there's an unwritten fine. rule in the untapped badge you can earn for taking photos, which you haven't done yet. Um, mm. But you get five extra points if there's a dog in your photo. That's yeah. something that I, I, I'm pretty sure my wife's on untapped just to look at beers and dogs. Um, Makes sense. So, so maybe one day we'll talk about the photogenic badge and, and, yeah. Uh, how to maybe set up your photos. I know we uh, had a similar conversation a couple of forevers ago with Paul Shim and uh, oh, Greg yeah. Apola back when they were doing the happy hours. Uh, Paul Shim's an amazing photographer. Um, if he's yes. on, I'm not going to give you any advice. But if Paul Shim doesn't want to come on and help out with the photogenic badge, I'll try my best to help. But that's not what we're doing next week. Next week, we're actually going to meet up with some clowns that know a few things about beer. Maybe even 12 things come to think of it. Mm. I know your wheels are already turning, but uh, you're going to have to wait until next week. That's right. Until then, cheers! cheers. A little bit's left. I really worked hard. Yeah. That's different. Going.